Our next guest is no stranger to tech's cost cuts, saying he is concerned about startup runways being shortened amid the fallout of SVB, which he calls an artery for the startup ecosystem. And now these layoffs at one of the biggest names in the sector. Spencer Raskoff joins us today, former Zillow CEO and co-founder and current Picasso chairman and co-founder. Spencer, it's great to have you back. It, it does sound like the SVB stuff uh, hit home for you, sort of consumed a big part of your weekend. <laughs> It did. I mean, look, I think I speak for the startup and venture capital community when I say it was an insane couple days and the dust is still not really settled yet. So founders and venture firms were scrambling all weekend to move money out of SVB and, and also sort of reposition themselves and their portfolios. Um, you know, big beneficiaries were clearly the big banks. I'm very glad to see the regional banks rebound this morning. That's encouraging. Uh, but we, we dodged a bullet. And now people are just starting to figure out and it's just starting to sink in what permanent changes there are going to be to the ecosystem now that SVB is gone from it. Uh, so we also you, had, you, Carl, just a, a huge education on treasury management, something that most startup founders know nothing about. And frankly, a lot of VCs, if they came from tech operational roles rather than from finance, most VCs don't have much experience in treasury functions either. So there are a lot of people scrambling to learn, um, yeah. you know, cash management, treasury function, and other things that uh, that don't come naturally to this tech or startup community. No, it's, it's been a crash course. So you are a buyer of this narrative or this, this framework that, okay, short term sigh of relief, uh, but longer term gut check on how tech and innovation is going to get funded and, and what happens if liquidity truly dries up? Yeah. So, I mean, one, one major thing we're trying to figure out still is the impact of venture debt. And people are just starting to focus on this aspect of the SVB fallout. So SVB was a huge provider of venture debt. It was very typical for a startup to have five or ten million dollars in their SVB account and another three to five million dollars of venture debt, a line that was undrawn. And that line provided extra runway. So there are a lot of companies that thought they had two years of runway which is to say cash left before they run out of cash. And now it turns out they have six or 12 months of runway. And so, I mean, people are still doing that math and still trying to figure all that out. And meanwhile, it's further confused by the fact that SVB is actually allowing companies to draw down their current venture lines, which is a little bit of a mind bender because it's not even really clear, you know, what the future of SVB is. So uh, figuring out that piece is going to allow people enable people to recalculate their runways and then figure out what type of funding needs they have going forward. And then then expense plans around headcount, advertising and other forms of expenditures will kind of be the, the output of that calculation. And I wonder how difficult, Spencer, it's going to be in the future without SVB to access those debt lines and credit for Silicon Valley firms, right? Easy money ended last year with the higher interest rates. I feel like this SVB collapse just punctuated it. For sure, for sure. So, I mean, this might finally be the straw that breaks the camel's back in terms of founder valuation expectations. So uh, there was kind of this impasse between founders and venture capital firms for the last six or so months as rates rose and VCs started to sort of pull back and, and have more onerous terms. A lot of founders were, were not doing rounds at valuations that VCs wanted. And so that's why there was such slow funding in Q4 and coming into Q1. Uh, but founders thought they had a couple years of runway. Now it looks like they have less. And so maybe this will actually restart the, the venture cycle a little bit once valuations reset. Although that's interesting, Spencer, because if you do have down rounds, it does force those who hold uh, these private securities to finally take marks that they may not have yet, correct? Yeah. So these late stage growth companies, uh, kind of Series C, Series D, Series E, which were the ones with the largest venture debt lines, those are the ones that had those pre-IPO rounds that were funded by the Fidelities, by the, the Vanguards, by these crossover hedge funds that had done big Series C, Series D, Series E pre-IPO rounds the last couple of years. And you're exactly right. Those will have to be marked down. Um, you know, if there are down rounds, uh, there are a lot of sort of fake valuations sitting on venture capital firm balance sheets and also on crossover fund balance sheets that haven't been marked down. And if there are new down rounds done, they, they will be marked.